Minerva McGonagall is the strict but fair head of Gryffindor House. When Rowling chose her name, she chose Minerva, the Roman goddess of warriors and wisdom, and chose McGonagall based off of William McGonagall, the worst poet in British history. She said, There was something irresistible to me about his name, and the idea that such a brilliant woman might be a distant relative of a buffoonish McGonagall. In this video, I'm going to explain Minerva's early life, which was not in the books, but released by Rowling years after the series ended, and explain her life from her origins to what happened to her at the end of the series. Let's start with Minerva's heritage, starting with their parents. Robert McGonagall lived in the same village as Isabel Ross. They became close, and every year, Robert thought that Isabel would go to a secret woman's boarding school, when in fact, she was really going to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Isabel kept her relationship with the Muggle, a secret from her witch and wizard parents who would not approve. By the time Isabel graduated from Hogwarts and had turned 18, she was in love with Robert, and the two ran away and got married to the fury of both sets of parents. Isabel still hadn't told Robert about her magic abilities and who she really was. They moved into the house Robert got for being a minister, and Isabel was quite good at making the most of Robert's tiny salary. Minerva was born shortly after they moved in. Isabel insisted on naming their daughter Minerva after her own grandmother, and the name raised some eyebrows in the muggle community that they lived in. After Minerva's birth, Isabel missed her family and the magical community that she had given up to be with Robert. She also began to get moody and started secluding herself and Minerva for days at a time. At a young age, Minerva began to show off her magical abilities abilities. She would make toys go from the top shelf to her cot. The family cat appeared to do her bidding before Minerva was even able to talk, and sometimes Robert's bagpipes would play themselves in the other room. Isabel knew that she had to confess to Robert about who she really was before he witnessed something that would scare or confuse him. When she finally confessed, she broke into tears, took out her wand, and showed him what she was. After she told him, Robert still loved his wife, but he was upset that she had kept such a big secret from him. And what was more, Robert, a man who prided himself on being an upright and honest man, had trouble lying to uphold the statute of secrecy that the Ministry of Magic enforced to keep wizards and witches a secret from muggles. As Minerva grew up, she saw her parents struggle with their relationship, which saddened her. Minerva would eventually have two younger brothers, Malcolm and Robert Jr., and both revealed magical powers at a young age as well. She helped her mother explain to her younger brothers that they must conceal their magical abilities, and she helped conceal the accidents and embarrassments their magic sometimes caused from their father. Minerva was very close with her father, and she shared more qualities with him than she did with her mother. She saw how much her father struggled with their family's secretive and strange life, and she saw how hard it was on her mother to fit into the muggle world, and how much she missed being around her own kind. When Minerva got her letter to Hogwarts, her mother sobbed not only out of pride, but out of envy that she could go into the wizarding world and be free of hiding who she was. When she arrived at Hogwarts and the sorting hat was placed on her head, there was a hat stall, meaning the hat spent five and a half minutes deciding between Gryffindor and Ravenclaw before she became a Gryffindor. Minerva was the most outstanding student of her year, with a particular talent in transfiguration, under the then professor of the subject, Albus Dumbledore. Minerva met a Hufflepuff girl named named Panoma Sprout, and the two had an excellent relationship both at school and later in life. Minerva was made a prefect in her fifth year and head girl in her seventh. She got top grades and was the winner of the Transfiguration Today Most Promising Newcomer Award. She was also quite gifted at Quidditch and was captain of the Gryffindor team. In her final year, however, a nasty fall because of a foul from a Slytherin player left her with a concussion, several broken ribs, and a lifelong desire to see Slytherin be crushed on the Quidditch pitch. At the very end of her education, with the help of her favorite professor, Albus Dumbledore, she became an Animagus, meaning that she could turn from a human to a cat at will something that is very difficult to accomplish. After she graduated, Minerva was offered a position at the Ministry of Magic in the Department of Magical Law Enforcement. She returned home to her family for one last summer before she moved to London to start her ministry career. During that summer, Minerva followed in her mother's footsteps and met a muggle boy named Dougal McGregor. She fell head over heels for him, and it was the first and only time in Minerva's life that she might have lost her head. At the end of the summer, Dougal proposed to her, and she accepted immediately. That night, she went home and started thinking about her future with Dougal, and she started to realize that her marriage would be a struggle, just like her parents' relationship was. She knew it would be the end of all of her ambitions, it would mean hiding who she really was, and she would have children that were taught to lie the way she and her brothers were. If she told them what she was, it would break the statute of secrecy, meaning she could never work for the Ministry of Magic. The next morning, she went to tell Dougal that she had changed her mind and that she couldn't marry him. She left him devastated and heartbroken, and she felt the exact same way, but she knew that she couldn't 
didn't show it. She set out for London three days later to start her ministry career. When Minerva went to start her life in London, she was unhappy and didn't enjoy her home or workplace. Although she did really like her boss, Elphinstone Yurcourt. Many of her other co-workers, however, were very anti-Muggle, which of course did not sit well with Minerva, seeing as she adored her Muggle father and continued to love the Muggle boy, Dougal. Minerva was very good at her job, and after two years, she was offered a prestigious promotion, but she declined the offer. She then sent an owl to Hogwarts, asking whether she might be considered for a teaching post. The owl returned within hours, offering her a job in the Transfiguration Department from the head of the department himself and her favorite professor, Albus Dumbledore. Minerva was greeted with delight when she returned to Hogwarts. She threw herself into her work and became a strict but inspirational teacher. While she was there, Dumbledore took on the post of headmaster to replace Professor Dippet. Minerva kept pictures of her family in a locked box under her bed, which included pictures of Dougal. While at Hogwarts, she heard from her mother that Dougal had married someone else, and even though she knew this day would come, Minerva was still heartbroken. Albus Dumbledore discovered her in tears in her classroom late one evening, and she told him the entire story. Dumbledore comforted her and shared his wisdom, and told Minerva some of his family history. He divulged how his sister had died, and how he might have been the one to blame for it. After that night, after the two intensely private and reserved people had shared extremely deep and personal insecurities, heartbreaks, and loss, they formed a strong relationship of lasting mutual esteem and friendship. Minerva continued to teach at Hogwarts, and was eventually made the head of Gryffindor House. She remained on good terms with her boss from her old ministry job, Elphinstone Yurcourt. One day he was in Scotland, and he came to visit her at Hogwarts, and he confessed his love to her, and he proposed to her. Minerva still being in love with Dougal turned him down. Even after that, however, Elphinstone continued to love her, and made it very obvious, and even proposed every so often, despite her turning him down over and over again. During the First Wizarding War, although she was extremely loyal to Dumbledore and believed in what the Order of the Phoenix was doing, she did not join the Order. She did, however, play a big part in helping Dumbledore and the Resistance. She spent many nights spying for the Ministry in her Animagus form, and brought Aurors, or Dark Wizard Catchers, crucial information on the activities of Voldemort and his followers. Minerva's youngest brother, Robert, died during the First Wizarding War, when he was killed by Death Eaters. Minerva was heartbroken to hear this news, and to top that off, she also got news from her mother that Dougal had died in a random anti-muggle attack by Death Eaters, along with his wife and children. Although Dougal's death was very traumatic for her, she seemed to finally be free. In the early 80s, around the time of Voldemort's first defeat, Elphinstone proposed to Minerva again, and this time Minerva accepted. Around that same time, Minerva went on a mission of her own to scout out the family that Dumbledore had told her that they were taking Harry Potter, the baby boy responsible for Voldemort's downfall. She watched them in her Animagus form, and realized that they were awful people. Do you really think it's safe? Leaving him with these people. I've watched them all day. They're the worst sort of muggles imaginable. She, along with Dumbledore and Rubius Hagrid, left Harry at the doorstep of his aunt and uncle's house. This boy will be famous. There won't be a child in our world who doesn't know his name. Exactly. He's far better off growing up away from all of that. Minerva, still not completely persuaded that the Dursleys were the best home for Harry, checked in with him from a distance from time to time, just to make sure he was okay. When she returned to Hogwarts, Elphinstone was overjoyed about their engagement. Because he was now retired, he was able to buy a cottage in Hogsmeade, the wizarding town next to Hogwarts. This way, the commute to school would be extremely easy for Minerva. When they got married, she decided that she was keeping her last name McGonagall, which made many people turn their heads, because she didn't want to take on the pureblood name Yurkort, but would rather stick with a common muggle name. Their marriage was very good, and both were extremely happy. They didn't have kids of their own, but her nieces and nephews from her younger brother's marriages were frequent visitors of their house. This was a period of great fulfillment for Minerva. Unfortunately, that happiness was cut short when Elphinstone received a venomous tentacula bite that ended up sending him to his deathbed. Minerva was once again heartbroken. Everyone that knew the couple was filled with great sorrow when they heard what had happened. Minerva couldn't bear to live in their cottage alone, because all it did was remind her of the happiness she had once felt, and how it was gone forever. She packed up her things after the funeral, and returned to her bedroom in Hogwarts Castle. Once again, Minerva threw herself into her work, and few people ever realized how much she suffered after everything that she had lost, except perhaps her close friend, Albus Dumbledore. She continued to teach at Hogwarts, and in 1991, Dumbledore devised a plan to bring the Philosopher's Stone to the castle to ensure its safety. She helped in guarding it by creating a giant chessboard in which she transfigured the giant pieces. This was the same year that Harry Potter, the boy she had been watching for many years, came to school, and he was sorted into her house, Gryffindor. Still wanting to see Slytherin crushed on the pitch, Minerva recruited Harry to the Gryffindor Quidditch team. I have found you a seeker. 
She ended up breaking some rules to get Harry the new Nimbus 2000, the fastest and best broomstick at the time. Even though she took a particular liking to Harry, it did not stop her from continuing her strict teaching methods, and she put him in detention for being out of bed at night. She also took 150 points away from Gryffindor, ensuring that her own house was in last place for the House Cup, something that they had not won in years. In the end, they ended up winning the House Cup thanks to Harry and his friends, which overjoyed Minerva. The following year, the Chamber of Secrets was opened, and Dumbledore was sacked, making Minerva become the temporary headmistress. When a student named Ginny Weasley was brought down to the chamber, Minerva had no choice but to close the school. I'm afraid this is the end of Hogwarts. Fortunately, Harry and Ron were able to find the chamber and put an end to the culprit behind the attacks. Dumbledore came back, and she went back to her duties of being just the transfiguration teacher. The following year, Minerva gave Hermione Granger a time turner so that she could attend more classes during the week and made her promise that she wouldn't abuse it or tell anybody about it. Later that same year, Harry asked Minerva if she could take the place of Harry's parents and signed his consent form so he could go into Hogsmeade. And she was very sorry to say that she couldn't. But Professor, I thought if you signed it, then I could go. I can't. Only a parent or a guardian can sign. Since I am neither, it would be inappropriate. I'm sorry, Potter. That's my final word. The broomstick that Minerva had gotten Harry was destroyed by the Whomping Willow, and Harry received a Firebolt Broomstick, the newest and faster broom that was even better than the Nimbus 2000. The broom came with no note, and Minerva, who was tipped off by Hermione, was suspicious that it could be from Sirius Black, who had just escaped from Azkaban, and was using the broomstick to either hurt or kill Harry. She and some other professors examined it closely, and they all realized it was perfectly okay to use. Harry used the Firebolt to finally win the Quidditch Cup for the first time in many years, which was a great delight for Minerva to finally see Gryffindor receive the cup over Slytherin. When they won, she was seen sobbing into and wiping her eyes with an enormous Gryffindor flag. The following year, when Harry was forced to participate in the Triwizard Tournament, Minerva protested with Dumbledore, who said Harry had to compete. Do nothing. Offer him up as bait. Potter is a boy. Not a piece of meat. At the end of the term, Voldemort had returned to a full body, and the second Wizarding War started. Dumbledore relaunched the Order of the Phoenix, and Minerva was one of the first people to join. The following term, Dolores Umbridge was appointed as the new Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher, and she was under the command of Minister for Magic, Cornelius Fudge, who had turned on and didn't believe Harry and Dumbledore that Voldemort had returned. Minerva and Umbridge butted heads, and Minerva did not try to hide her disgust with Umbridge. So silly of me, but it sounds as if you're questioning my authority in my own classroom. Minerva, not at all, Dolores. Merely your medieval methods. Later in the term, Umbridge was made High Inquisitor, and one of her tasks was to observe classes. While Umbridge was watching Minerva's class, Minerva snapped. I wonder how you expect to gain an idea of my usual teaching methods if you continue to interrupt me. You see, I do not generally permit people to talk while I'm talking. Umbridge discovered a club called Dumbledore's Army run by Harry, and Dumbledore took credit for starting the club. Fudge, thinking that the army that Dumbledore formed was to fight him in the ministry, ordered Dumbledore's arrest and tried to take him by force. Minerva, who was loyal to her close friend, drew her wand and said he wasn't taking them on single-handed, and she was prepared to duel several oars. But Dumbledore ordered her to stand down and said that Hogwarts would need her when he was gone. Umbridge was appointed headmistress over Minerva to her fury. Later that year, Umbridge and several Aurors tried to forcibly remove Hagrid from the grounds, and he took them on single-handed. Minerva came running out to help him, and told them to leave him alone. Before she could even draw her wand, she was hit with four stunning spells at once in the chest. This badly injured her, and she was sent to St. Mungo's, the Wizarding Hospital, to receive treatment. Minerva's longtime friend and colleague, Professor Sprout, said that had the students not been at risk, she would have resigned in protest of this cowardly act. Minerva did not return to Hogwarts until the end of term, and even when she did return, she was still not at full strength. She was, however, very happy to see Umbridge sacked after that term. The following year, Dumbledore was killed when Death Eaters entered the school, and she participated in the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, where she fought the Death Eaters off. She dueled Electo Caro, and she easily overpowered her, sending her running for cover. After the battle, she was devastated to hear about Dumbledore's death, the man who she had known nearly her entire life as a teacher, mentor, and friend. She held his funeral at Hogwarts, and she took on the position of headmistress. However, she was replaced by Snape as headmaster at the start of the following term. Snape also had the Cairo siblings, two of Voldemort's Death Eaters at his side, and Minerva did all she could to protect the students. She aided Dumbledore's army, and helped them have meetings in secret. 
At the end of term, Harry, Ron, and Hermione returned to Hogwarts, and Harry went to Ravenclaw Tower, looking for a clue to find the lost diadem of Ravenclaw. The Caros, along with McGonagall, came to the tower. The Caro's sister was already unconscious when Minerva and the Caro brother walked in. Harry was there under his invisibility cloak. The Caro brother told Minerva that Voldemort had warned them that Harry might come to Ravenclaw Tower. Why would Potter try to get inside Ravenclaw Tower? Potter belongs in my house. Beneath the disbelief and anger, Harry heard a little strain of pride in her voice, and affection for Minerva McGonagall gushed up inside him. The Caro brother then tried to call Voldemort, but Minerva refused to allow it, and he spit in Minerva's face. Harry then revealed himself. You shouldn't have done that. And he shot a spell at the Caro brother that made him go flying. Minerva told Harry to flee as quickly as he could, but Harry told her that he couldn't and that he was on Dumbledore's orders. This completely changed Minerva's thought process. You're on Dumbledore's orders? She drew herself up to her fullest height. We shall secure the school against he who must not be named, while you search for this, this object. Potter. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Professor. Minerva, Professor Sprout, and Professor Flitwick worked together to drive Snape out of the castle. Minerva got all of the underage students out of the castle and said that any students that were of age were allowed to fight if they wanted to. She then, to her best ability, protected the school and tried to give Harry as much time as she could while he tried to find the diadem. Hogwarts is threatened. Man the boundaries. Protect us. Do your duty to our school. Minerva fought skillfully during the battle and was a leading presence in the fight. At the end of the battle, she, along with Horace Slughorn and Kingsley Shacklebolt, dueled with Voldemort. Harry then stepped forward and defeated Voldemort, ending both the battle and the war. After the fight, Minerva was awarded Order of Merlin First Class for her unwavering allegiance to the Order of the Phoenix, and shortly after that, she was featured on a card in the Chocolate Frog Famous Witches and Wizards series, something she admitted that she had never imagined receiving. Minerva returned to her position of headmistress and remained there for many years. She hired her former student Neville Longbottom, a student that she had always believed in, as the new professor of herbology. Minerva faced so much loss and tragedy in her life, but she pushed through that tragedy and turned it into something incredible. Even though very few people were there for her when things got tough, she was always ready to step up when she was needed, whether that be for her students, her friends, or the entire wizarding world. You can always count on Minerva McGonagall to be there.